Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I had someone link me a video uh, in a private message who I know. They're like, Jason, you haven't covered Alan Thrall in a while, and he just put up this routine. It's going to be the routine he's following, but he put up this routine. I'm confused by it. I don't know what to make of it. You usually have a favorable opinion of Alan, even though you haven't discussed him in a while. Uh, what's going on with this? And actually, it's a, it's a good question. And no, I haven't even actually looked at probably anything on Alan's page for a couple months. Uh, so yeah, I went and checked it out. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. We're called Skilled at My Crafting a little bit. And let's talk about this. All right, guys. Welcome to Programming for Advanced Lifters. Uh, this is one of the problems we run into when we start talking about advanced strength training, advanced strength athletes of how to program for them versus uh, the majority of you out there, right? This is the problem we run into. Guess what? It gets complicated. The exercise variations, the rotations through exercises in order to continue to make progress once you are strong is a completely different universe from the novice. And, and that's what people need to understand, you know? So it's kind of like <clears throat> there are things that I say that people say he's breaking a lot of rules that you have for all of us. I'm like, that's right, because you guys are still trying to get to a 300-pound bench press. You're still trying to get to a 400-pound squat. You're still trying to get to a 500-pound deadlift. I'll tell you right now, this program would be horrific for you if you're in that situation. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, looking at it, I don't say that I would necessarily agree with everything there, but Alan uh, is an experienced coach. He is an experienced athlete. He's competed in at least three strength sports. Or four, four at this point. He's competed in four different strength sports. He's competed in four different strength sports. He is himself a coach. Um, he has pretty good knowledge of, of training programming. This is his personal program specific to him, and he's already said he might make changes to it actually as he goes and adjusts. So what does that tell you? Probably not the right program for you, and that's kind of something he says, like I'm putting this out here, but he was kind of alluding that you could make changes for your personal needs. Um, so let, let's go over to some of the points of, of what I mean here. What do I tell you guys stuff like? Don't do partials of any type. Don't do uh, touch and go bench press. Pause. Why do I say these things? Because novices don't need exercise variation. You need to get good at all the big exercises. And my definition of a novice is not going to be the same as, as always what Alan's and other people's are. Um, novices are, are people who still need to focus on the basics to a large extent. Um, even if you can't do a novice linear progression. And I think that's the problem you're running into is that starting strength terminology has really, really changed definitions of, of a novice. And to me, a novice is anybody who's still weak, anyone who doesn't have a strength base. And yeah, if you bench 205, you don't have a strength base, right? If you squat 315, you don't have a strength base, right? If that's your max, that's the best you can do if you're a man. Woman, that's pretty damn good. But if you're a man, a healthy young man, by healthy young man, I mean anything under 40 is young. You know, I'll give you a little bit of wiggle room, guys, in my age back. I'll give you a little wiggle room, but you guys still need to be deadlifting 500 pounds. Right? Uh, just what we're talking about. I'm talking about guys who are weak still. You don't need any of this variation. You sure as hell don't need to be doing any sort of partial exercise. And you need to understand that some exercises do benefit from partials, but not in the way that you think. In other words, if you were to come to me and say, okay, he's doing these overhead presses, he's doing a partial, he's doing it from, from a certain height, and then he is actually increasing the, the distance a little bit over the blocks, doesn't that go against what you say regarding partials? Yeah, if it was a bench press, it would. If it was a squat, it would. We're talking about the press. The press is its own unique beast. Now... Does doing a partial and increasing the weight make you gain muscle and strength faster? No. In other words, the, the research is pretty clear on that. If you cut the range of motion in half on an exercise and you add weight to accommodate, what happens? You gain less muscle and strength. That's what the studies show. The press is an animal. It's a different animal. The press is, again, one of my favorite exercises. It has a sticking point that is not just about strength. The press actually has a sticking point that has to do with technique and bar path. And that sticking point tends to be right there, right? By training from that sticking point, once you've built a base on the exercise, you know, and Alan presses over 200 pounds, uh, 
once you've built a base on that exercise, learning to push through that sticking point by training the movement pattern. And when I say the, the movement pattern, I don't mean that you're doing a heavy partial because you, you might find you can't do more weight from that point. What are we doing? We're training the bar path. We are learning to find that sweet spot in the bar path when it gets up there to where when that bar is at that position above you and you're in the right position, you can press more weight. You're stronger there. So by training it, actually training it, what are you doing? You're learning that bar path. All right. So you get into things like that that he's incorporating in there. We're, we're learning to train that bar path and then he's reducing it so that you get into that bar path and eventually you go all the way back down to the chest again. Um, that's a, for advanced lifters, though. That's for more advanced lifters. Uh, if you guys who are still struggling to get to a 200 overhead press, you don't need to be worrying about this. You need to build your base. You can worry about optimizing bar path once you're actually strong. Because I can tell you right now, if you're weak, an optimal bar path is still weak. So it doesn't matter. You need to be building muscle. You need to be building strength. Guys like Alan have, have already built his base many years ago. His base was finished years ago. Right? His base was finished years ago. He's got a competitive experience in pretty much all four strength sports. Um, and he is a strong guy. So we come over to, to that point. He doesn't need to worry necessarily about the pure base building. And for more novice lifters, exercise variation, too much variation does what? And I'm not saying you can't do a bunch of weaker point training. You know what? If you novices want to knock yourself out with face pulls and core work and stuff all day long, go ahead. You want to do general physical preparedness all day long, go ahead. But you don't need to be doing bench press variations. You don't need to be doing rack pulls. So we come over to the point. He has a lot of variation. Um, Alan is rotating through variation through all four days. All four days of his week's are pretty much full body workouts, aren't they? They're not really splits. They're movement pattern splits. And then he has main exercises. He has assistance exercises. And he has what he calls a third exercise. So essentially, he's still using the same concept of, of you know, again, a primary exercise, assistance movements, and accessory movements. He's using different SEP and RET schemes for them. And he has a generally divided into three blocks that are a loose form of linear periodization, right? He's running... A loose form of linear periodization using main exercises, assistance exercises, and accessory exercises. Right? That's what he's doing with exercise variation throughout the four days in the week. Um, again, he's got two days that's dedicated to overhead pressing, at least for the first three blocks, and then he goes over to pretty much bench pressing. Uh, spread through the week with benching all throughout. And then he's got uh, squatting the first half of the week, mostly deadlifting the second half of the week. But it's still all full body because there's still some sort of lower body work and some sort of press through all the days. Um, and, and again, there's a lot of volume in here. And he generally starts with moderate reps and starts working down. And then his final block, he gets really heavy and still has back off work that's higher rep. So if I recall, it looks like he's working around seven or eight, then he drops down to five to six. And so he's dropping down as he goes and increasing weight and intensity uh, with some undulation in there because he has a back off week in there to give himself a little bit of recovery, right? It's still a hard week, but he is backing down just a hair, I think on like week six. Um, and then the final block, he kind of cuts the overhead pressing out and goes to straight benching. But yeah, there's a lot of bench variation in there. There's a lot of variation uh, he's got everything from touch and go bench to slingshot bench to spoto press to floor press. And the floor press is getting his paws back up. I mean, that's the other thing that you've got to look at. People say, man, this, 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 there is accommodating resistance. There is some of this stuff, but he is still getting his, his power out of the bottom because he's got floor press in there and he's doing the pause spoto press. So his spoto press is paused one inch off the chest. That's not quite the same as what some guys are doing as a spoto press. Um, but again, he's got floor press in there. So he does have different variations through there. So again, he's working on different performance elements throughout the week, and then he's rotating it through the different blocks. This is why I tell people, I don't really, I'm not going to write cookie cutter programs for advanced lifters, because this is the exact problem you run into. This is written for Alan himself. This is based upon his experience, what he knows he needs, and the equipment. He specifically says this is based on the equipment I have available to me, right? I have a lot of equipment in my gym. It's my playground. This is based upon the stuff that I have. So if you don't even have his, his equipment, you're not necessarily going to be able to run this. And more advanced lifters, 
uh, do benefit from using these different devices. Having a safety squat, I've got a safety squat bar, right? Having different bars, having this different equipment is going to benefit you as you get more advanced. Um, but this is how advanced lifters train. This is how advanced lifters train. These minor variations in the exercises programmed, not random. They are programmed. He selected this stuff all for a reason with a game plan. But when you start seeing what an advanced lifter does, people will say things like, well, I don't really understand uh, what's, what's going on here. Uh, what are you doing in your workouts? Could you explain it week to week? Now that you see an advanced lifter who's laid out his stuff, do you see the problem with, with breaking it down for you week to week? Are you really going to be able to follow it? And you're certainly not going to want to fully replicate it. You, you pretty much need to write a book. You pretty much need to write a book to break down any, any of your advanced programs that you are doing yourself as an advanced lifter. People want to understand the specifics. Um, and that's the thing we run into with it. So a lot of people, I think, People who look at this, who know kind of what I promote, are going to be like, well, I mean, uh, Jason's going to rip this apart. No, I'm actually not. I understand a lot of what he's doing there. And it is a, it's very specific to him and his own personal weaknesses, his own personal strengths. Um, and a lot of what he's doing in there is is working on his specific weak points, right? You're going to have different weak points than he's going to. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't really see any major problems with the program. I mean, there are things I would personally do different. But then again, I'm not coaching Alan Thrall either, am I? So, again, my opinion on this is, is, is pretty neutral. I don't necessarily like everything he's doing. Uh, but but I understand why he's doing a lot of what he's doing. And, and again, this kind of highlights when we start getting to advanced lifters. The, the programming can start to become very very complex very quickly just trying to put 10 pounds on your squat over the next year all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time